हेलो एवरीवन, आई एम दीपक भारद्वाज टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट द थर्ड चैप्टर ऑफ द बायोग्राफी द ल्यूमिनस लाइफ ऑफ मुंशी प्रेमचंद एडिशन 2008। द ऑथर ऑफ दिस बुक वाज अमृत राय सन ऑफ मुंशी प्रेमचंद एंड एडिटेड बाय श्याम दुआ दिस बुक वाज पब्लिश्ड बाय टाइनी टॉट पब्लिकेशंस द नेम ऑफ द चैप्टर इज कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन टू लिटरेचर Premchand's position in the Indian literature is like a strong pillar. Whenever we talk about Indian novels, Premchand's significance is always discussed. He left his influence on this field and wrote in many languages. Mostly all of his novels are the reflections of social reforms and mass awakening. From Prema to Karmabhoomi, all of his novel were directed towards political and social reforms. He was the inspiration for many writers. He used to write very good short stories. His technique for writing such stories and the last two novels Godan and Mangal Sutra influenced his contemporaries as well as remote successors in Indian languages. His writings were appreciated and widely accepted because he portrayed the problems of village folk which were common in those days premchand's writing was full of variety and vision he accepted all the growing ideals of his time as he dawned on the hindi world the bengali fiction matured to a substantial position he also never objected from enriching the fiction in his language especially from the landmarks set by bankim chandra chatterjee rabindranath tagore and sharhad chandra chatterjee A remarkable novel Anand Math by Bankim Chandra made a huge influence on the intellectuals of the nation because of its thought provoking contents. Rabindranath Tagore also came up with his Kora in 1910 and other works which dealt with social and political destiny of the nation. Tagore in his Ghare Baire The Home and the World symbolized his age and the intellectuals of Bengal who were passionate in the swadeshi movement he also talked about the conflict and ideologies and sensibilities in jog ajog links and gaps in 1930 in 1901 sharhad chandra chatterji a contemporary of premchand came up with devdas their themes and ideals were almost same chatterji published shrikant and charitrahin in 1917 which was just 2 years before premchand's seva sadan chatterjee wrote pothar davi demand of the road a great political novel which appeared a year after premchand's rangbhoomi in 1924 premchand contributed to hindi fiction just as chatterjee contributed to bengali fiction these characteristics entered into the fictions of other languages also in the following years This made the position of Premchand distinct in the Indian literature. On the other hand, the Malayalam literature was going quite after Chandu Menon (1847 to 1900) and Ram Lal Pillai (1858 to 1917), who mainly showed the comic vision of life in their writings. Writers like Takashi Shivashankar Pillai, P. Keshav Dev, and Muhammad Bashir. took the themes of social and political changes in their novels krishna murthy's kalki brought such themes in tamil premchand was very popular in other languages as almost all his novels and stories had been translated into tamil and malayalam a anant chari translated premchand's work into tamil in 1929 in the late 30s Historical novels were very popular in Telugu as Soumya Jalu translated Premchand's Seva Sadan into Telugu then K Shore Narayan Shastri translated Premchand's work Nirmala and Prem ki Vedi into Telugu in this way most of Premchand's work had been translated into Telugu social themes appeared in Telugu fiction with Chalam Gopichand Kutumbarao G V Krishna Rao etc The Gujarati writers Ramanlal Desai and Dhumketu selected same themes like Premchand 
Farke also followed the same pattern in most of his novels in Marathi. Premchand's work had been translated into Gujarati and Marathi also. In Assamese fiction, Trilokyanath Goswami and Sayyid Abdul Malik were the contemporaries of Premchand in following his writing pattern. Premchand portrayed the misery of the exploited class in Urdu and Shindi fiction. Premchand's tradition was followed by authors of Angare, a volume of Urdu short stories. It was based on the theme of protest against strict religious and social values. Village background had been one of Premchand's favorite theme. So, Azam Qureshi furthered his tradition to depict the village milieu. On the other hand, writers like Abbas Hosseini, Hapatullah Ansari, Upendranath Ashk and Suhail Ajambadi extended the tradition of Premchand's realistic representation. Afterwards, writers like Sadat Hasan Manto, Krishna Chander, Rajendra Singh Bedi and Ismat Chugtai also carried the trend of Premchand's writing. In Sindhi, the influence of Premchand's writing may be seen in the works of Jagat Adwani, Bihari Lal Chhabariya, Vimal Kumari and Shohar Lal Hinduja. Around 1935, the short story in Punjabi language emerged. The novels on contemporary issues were published around the period of independence and that was the time when Premchand was the key figure. Premchand's main theme were the miseries of Indian peasants, the middle class or the struggling millions in the freedom movement. His translated novels inspired many authors in the other Indian languages to write about the contemporary social and political scenario. Premchand was a pioneer in portraying the realistic issues that were prevalent in the society. The Indian fiction developed in various languages on western pattern because of his realistic approach. His attitude towards literature was modern that could overcome all orthodox views. His attitude was progressive but his progressivism was stressed into communalism by some authors. However, for Premchand, Gandhian vision was having a priority over his progressive ideals. At later period, he wrote Godan and Mangal Sutra. In Mangal Sutra, he emphasized on the national expansion for modernism. That means he was a pioneer of the modernism who painted the shades of social realities. In 1920, the movement of realism started in Bengal. Premchand's work had been characterized by their originality. In November 1934, the Indian intellectuals in London formed the Indian Progressive Writers Association, which was organized by Mulkaraj Anand and Sajjad Zaheer. The objective of the new literature was to deal with the basic problems of their existence, that is, the problems of hunger and poverty, social backwardness and political subjugation. Premchand published their association's manifesto in the October 1935 issue of Hans. Premchand gave new direction to the progressive writing. He gathered new philosophy and new culture in literature. He was given the invitation to manage the first progressive writers conference held at Lucknow on April 9, 1936. He was given this honor because of his eminence in the field. He took Tagore's place and discarded the efforts to label literature with any ism. He urged the writers and intellectuals to think about the basic human issues. The progressive tradition provoked Indian writers to explore new scopes to the realistic approach emphasized by Western developments. Premchand wrote stories like Shatranj Ke Khiladi, Poos Ki Root and Kafan and went far ahead of his successors. Whatever appeared in Bengali, Premchand penned it down in Hindi. He exposed social issues and evils and made the readers think about them. He provoked his readers' conscience to think about the problems prevalent at that time. 
he wrote stories showing revolt against orthodoxy and custom dr sukumar sen observed in his history of bengali literature some of these writers were possibly influenced by the rejection of tagore's poetry as oriental pattern by the younger generation of english poets rather it was taken as the real force between the master and his works Dhaka session of the progressive group that was led by novelist Dr Naresh Chandra Senugupta and the poet Mohit Lal Majumdar stated publicly that the day of Tagorean literature had ended and hence their followers said that Tagore was an obstruction to them some critics like Nalini Kant Gupta said that some of the progressive writers displayed an original approach and free expression but at the same time they were not in favor of imposition of ideas and ideals that were foreign and hostile to their natural and mental environment bengal was getting dominated with a forceful progressive trend there was a sharp line that divided the traditional and the progressive in 1924 the new progressive school was made famous by the journal shanti barir chitti the saturday post founded by ashok chatterji the movement for progressive writing received further force when the journal pragati was launched from dhaka in 1928 it is interesting to note that major works of premchand which were the piece of progressive writings had been already published by the time premchand was a genius with a firm imagination he made an excellent influence on indian fiction while on his journey from reformative to progressive mission his impact cannot be defined in a set pattern philosophical and practical approaches had their own mood to shape up fiction in various indian languages premchand is the leading partaker in the common stream of indian fiction he is the main representative of his age from the period of late 30s till 50s the indian literature is characterized by the features of progressivism premchand's contribution in indian literature is very important even today premchand is of much importance in fact it was premchand who painted the indian reality through his genius indian literature owes its versatility and variety to him premchand was in mahoba for hardly 4 months when he had to face the anger of government The publication of his first volume had made him very happy but his happiness ended soon. While he was on an inspection tour the district collector called him. Premchand had to cover 34 miles on a bullock cart to see the collector. The collector was having a copy of Premchand's story collection Soz Evatan. He asked Premchand if he had written that book. Premchand accepted his authorship. He had to explain all the themes of the stories to the collector. The collector was very angry at him. He said that all the stories were the incitement to rebellion. Collector said that his hands would have been cut if it were Mughal rule. Finally Premchand had to submit all the copies. By that time 300 copies of the books had been already sold the collector burned all the copies that were there with premchand the remaining copies that were with nigam had been saved however it was for the first time in india that any author's book had been challenged and then burned for the fear of revolt after that whatever he wrote he had to submit it for the clearance of government so as to get it published writing was his daily work so he had to send a manuscript every month to the district collector premchand was fed up of all this on may 13 1910 he wrote a letter to munshi daya narayan nigam he was now looking for a new name so as to continue writing he had been famous with his name nawab rai by 6 years toil now he had to come up as a new author 
which again needed a lot of hard work nigam suggested the pen name of premchand so now the world knew him by the name of premchand after adopting the pseudonym he wrote bade ghar ki beti the daughter of a noble family which was his first work to be published under his new name it was published in december 1910 in jamana now he was careful to keep his identity a secret he was also very alert about choosing the plots and themes of his stories so as to avoid any controversy he was an author who lived in present and who dealt with the problems of his age but now he started writing about the past he turned his attention to history and folk tales he was impressed with the plenty of legendary stories about heroic battles that flourished in mahoba and started writing about them he had studied the history of rajasthan and so he made use of it now he was favoring the extremists and not the moderates as now he was greatly influenced by gokhale tilak his job involved traveling different places this made him meet people and customs of diverse nature he also experienced jungle life during his tours all his experiences that he had during this time were reflected in his stories of that period like alha rani saranda vikramaditya ki tega raja hardwal maryada ki vedi shikari rajkumar mamia milap pap ka agni kund amavas ki raat etc he was writing for jamana on regular basis premchand wrote his urdu novel jalwa e har in 1912 he had begun writing this story while he was in kanpur but he completed it in mahoba the indian press alahabad published this book but the hindi version of the book was published 9 years later in 1921 this novel had a confused surface dealing with the love affair of pratap and virjan at that time the writer was performing the style and expertise the novel displays the author's attempt to demonstrate the mistreatment of the peasants by the zamindars money lenders casteism and the prevalent play of police atrocities premchand's eldest daughter kamla was born at mahoba he had another girl child there but she did not survive at that time he was going to publish his next stories collection prem pachisi he was also planning to switch over from urdu to hindi so he expressed his wish in a letter to nigam that he wrote in february 1913 saying take me as your editor of hindi department i shall be translating interesting articles from newspapers and magazines he was also short of money at that time as is evident from the letter to the editor of jamana that he wrote on june 7 1913 I shall be much grateful to you if you could send me without much difficulty a 3 to 4 rupee watch and a pair of shoes worth 4 or 4 and a half my shoes have been taken by chotak and i am without them he had to travel a lot because touring was an inseparable part of his job so constant traveling made a bad effect on his health and he began to develop regular complaints of indigestion his poverty also started affecting his writing now he wanted his posting to be done at a better place in the meantime he had also developed severe amoebic dysentery despite every treatment he was never able to recover fully from this problem his last year while staying in mahoba was a very painful year for him he suffered a lot during that year finally the authorities accepted his transfer request but on the contrary he was posted to another backward region of the province called basti staying there proved to be same as in mahoba 
Premchand spent about two and a half years from 1914 to 16 in Basti. Here also, he had to continue his touring duty. He did not want to stay in Basti and was planning to launch a journal. Earlier in 1913, when Nigam started his weekly paper Ajar, Premchand wanted to join him, but he was not well at that time. He was also afraid about the financial condition of a new paper, so he dropped the idea. But again, he felt his urge to take up journalism as his career. He was also thinking to take over Jamana, so he wrote about this to Nigam. He wanted to know if he was thinking right. He wanted to take leave for a year without pay and attempt this new venture. This planning was supported by his serious desire to pay his full attention to literary writing with some economic security for earning his living. He had written about his plan to Nigam during his stay at Mahova, saying, "Here, I have rendered some 15 years of service. If I live for some time, I may be eligible for invalid pension." May 22. 1914 before joining the assignment in basti he was on 6 months leave for his treatment still he was not able to recover from his illness fully while he was in mahoba and basti premchand was keen to develop his own writing style he had read the works of european as well as bengali writers he himself had an experience of writing for 15 years by now he was also into the translation of other stories it was high time now to have his his individual style of writing he expressed his thoughts in a letter to nigam on march 4 1914 i am still undecided what style to adopt sometimes i follow bankim and sometimes ajab recently i have read count tolstoy and since then i am in influence this is my weakness what else it is seen that all the great writers have worked hard to make their own styles and premchand was also walking on the same track very soon premchand came up with his own writing style which was different from any other author that was also the time when he was planning to write in original hindi There were so many reasons for this switch over. He was economically not well off. The Hindi publications had larger scope. He wanted to reach maximum number of readers who did not have access to Urdu. He told about his attempt to write in Hindi to Nigam in his letter that he wrote on September 1, 1915. I am now practicing to write in Hindi. It is not possible to live on Urdu writing. It seems I will have to spend my life in Hindi writing like Bal Mukund Gupt, which Hindu writer has achieved success in Urdu that I shall attend. He was not happy with Urdu journals and publishers for numerous reasons. His short story collection Prem Pachisi was published in 1915. which was highly appreciated by the renowned urdu poet mohammad iqbal this collection was having most of the stories that he had written in mahoba he had also written the manuscript of the part 2 of prem pachisi by this time he composed some very good short stories here like ishwar nyay kaptan sahib do bhai dhoka panch parmeshwar Fatah, Balidan, Sajanta ka Dand, etc. And these stories were published in Saraswati in 1916. This was the time when Premchand felt the need to get some academic credentials. Probably it was his profession that demanded it, as he was working in an educational institution. He was unwell, but still he devoted some time to academic studies. There was much strain on him because of his service and the massive writings. He told about his academic progress to Nigam in a letter 
that he wrote on July 26, 1915 from Basti. I want to appear for FA Faculty of Arts examination. There is no go without this in the department. Now his major bugbear mathematics was also made optional so the biggest obstacle was removed. He cleared his intermediate with English, philosophy, Persian and modern history. He got a second division. After few years he took BA exams also because he wanted to have a university degree. He had studied Persian under Maulvi Sahab which proved very useful while appearing for this exam. In August 1916 Premchand was posted to Gorakhpur. Here he taught at normal school. He was also getting a monthly allowance of rupees 15 as he was also working as a superintendent of the boarding house. He found the place interesting. That was the period where his literary works got good recognition. He got to know many eminent writers and scholars. He also got a new sense of direction in his field. His new friends who were to get same fame in their respective fields were Raghupati Sarai Firak, the renowned Urdu poet and the winner of Gyanpeet Award, Mahavir Prasad Poddar and Imtiaz Ali Taj of Lahore. It was none but Mahavir Prasad Poddar who influenced Premchand greatly to write in Hindi. Premchand was writing for Taj's journal Kahkashani the Milky Way on a regular basis then Premchand published his works like Prem Pachisi part 2 Bazaar e Husn Prem Padisi part 2 this place was the place where Premchand came under the influence of Gandhian philosophy and that changed his life all in all it was here only that he developed a firm faith in non-violence movement Later on he condemned his 20 year old long government job as a teacher. Premchand had translated the works of Tolstoy also and during that time he approached the Gandhian philosophy. He very well knew the will belief of Tolstoy in love, mercy and rejection of wealth. Premchand had published his translation of Tolstoy's stories under the title of Prem Prabhakar which is a collection of 23 stories some of them are that whereby man live where love is there god is also children may be wiser than the elders how much land does a man require the godfather etc the night when premchand and his family reached gorakhpur his elder son dhunu shripatrai was born He got an increment of rupees ten the same month. Later on, he was sent to Allahabad for training in first aid. After the training, he again got an increment of rupees ten. Now his salaries were rupees seventy per month. His stepmother was having bitterness towards his wife Shivrani Devi, whereas Shivrani endured her behavior in a calm manner. She never let her home atmosphere disturb because of her mother-in-law resentment towards her. In the year 1917, Premchand came up with his first collection of short stories in Hindi under the title of Sapt Saroj. It was 9 years back that he published his Urdu collection. This new collection had 7 stories: Bade Ghar Ki Beti, Saut, Sajanta Ka Dand, Panch Parameshwar, Namak Ka Daroga, Upadesh and Pariksha. These stories were having educative essence in them. These stories show the writer's concern to make the society an ideal place to live in where you can find justice and goodness. In his story, Bade Ghar Ki Beti, the author deals with the issue of breaking up of joint family system. His character of Anandi in the story is sketched to show how the breaking up of joint families in the new civilization can be avoided. In the story, two brothers, Shrikant and Lal Bihari, get detached due to some domestic problems. 
but in the end they get united again premchand believed in the system of joint family in which all the members of the family live together in harmony but the modern readers had many reasons to argue with his views in his story sajanta ka dand he attacked on the depression of the society where honesty and goodness of a man may be given a reward of threat to his very existence in this story the honest district engineer sardar shiv singh is harassed and finally transferred here the author puts a question to the society he asks if the development of society is possible by removing the honest people who were the actual strength of the society premchand sets the ideal of truth and justice in the story panch parameshwar the panch is a community of magistrates that gives its judgment and has a legal authority mostly in villages the panch is also an embodiment of divine power that gives out impartial justice here the writers has portrayed the mental conflicts of the characters it is said to be premchand's one of the most exceptional stories of psychoanalytical nature premchand talked about his dedication and devotion to duty in his story namak ka daroga here the writer has portrayed how the dishonest people can also change by the sacrifice made by the honest people so premchand was not biased about his characters or themes he paid equal heed towards his subject matter and characters he had a great impact of western authors he had the best features in writing style and technique he had written very intense stories which were able to hold readers interest till the end but there are certain occasions when he has given excessive description without being aware that these might divert the readers interest he has written stories that are both psychoanalytical as well as narrative he was not an idealist or practical in any sense once in his essay he clarified that the main objective of a writer is to create beauty with the amalgamation of both real and the ideal in his words a story should throw light on some aspect of life it should examine the conventions of society with enthusiasm and criticism and should awaken the natural impulse of man for truth satyam the good shivam and the beautiful sundaram here our third chapter ends and in next video we will start our fourth chapter